Hi, it's me, Dr. Lee, and thank you for joining me. We're talking about the manifestation of God. I'm calling this one, You Haven't Seen Nothing Yet. You Haven't Seen Nothing Yet. I want to talk about the manifestation of God. I'm expecting God to show up and show out in my life like never before. I'm, I am expecting him to blow my socks off like only he can do. While on this journey of the manifestation of God, I've been doing my best to focus also on Isaiah 26 and 3 daily throughout my day. Well, um, and it says Isaiah 26 and 3, this is the NKJV. It says, you will keep him in perfect peace who mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you so i've been practicing this whole peace thing just been at peace with whatever may come you know whatever life just throw at you however and sometimes you know we are throwing good things bad things however and that can just you know take your mind off of the lord and with that it can mess with your peace before you know it you went from like point a to point b to c d and now you all thrown off of you know focus on god and the things of god and I have in my notes here, be aware while on your journey. Be aware of different spiritual attacks, uh, spiritual tricks the enemy can play, uh, spiritual war, spiritual warfare, uh, spiritual activity. And I have a scenario down here where um, I went into the store to get, um, to get a key. Trying to make the story short. Well, when I got the key... The guy that made the key for me was not the person that's supposed to be making the key for me. He was supposed to have been just calling somebody for me to get the key made. But he decided to make the key. He makes the key. He give it to me in a bag and tell me to have a blessed, um, a blessed day. And he was like, keep up the um positive energy. I like your energy. I like your flow. Just keep it up. And I'm looking at him. And he was, um, he... While he was making my key, he was t you know, talking about the places he's traveled and being and everything. But while he was talking, he used a lot of profanity, which was odd to me because I never, you know, I never go call been in a store like that. Like one of these big old super centers where the, the person on the clock was like using profanity, like, you know, just talking to one of their, you know, homeboys or homegirls, however. And so with that, he gives me this key. I have no receipt for it. And I got to walk through the whole store. So me and my mind was like, okay, you know, I got to like, okay, what am I going to do? Am I just going to drop this um, bag in the store and um, leave it? Or am I just going to pay for it? Cause I need, I need the key, the copy of the key. So by the time I got to the front, I said, you know what? I'm going to just ask the person up here to ring the key, um, key up. I'm going to take it out the bag, which is going to look odd. I'm going to take it out the bag and I'm going to ask them to ring it up. And if he loses his job, so be. I don't want anybody to lose a job, but I don't. I don't have time, you know, for uh, this setup. It could be a setup from the the, the devil about a two dollar key. So a lot of times people look at it and say, "Oh, this is a, a blessing. You know, it's a blessing. Somebody put this in a bag for me, and you know, and just you know, gave it to me free." And, and maybe, you know, sometimes a manager can give you some free to make them comp it or discount it or whatever. But in this scenario, the guy wasn't a manager and he, I don't know. And then the fact that he was using profanity, but he was kind, was kind of odd. But with that, imagine if I, um, when I got there and got the key, it worked out good because when I went in the bag to get the key and pull out, that way I could ask somebody to, you know, to ring it up for me. I was at self-checkout. I saw the barcode. So I went in the bag and he had pulled the barcode off but he threw it in the bag and so i was able to ring the um barcode up the little barcode and it rung up the key so i was like thank you thank you jesus but with that sometimes you know we could get caught in situation with somebody act like they're doing something good for us and when it's actually you know something that's not good it's something illegal something to get you in trouble so we have to think of um about those things and Keep our mind on the things of the Lord. And I said, just that, you know, even though that was something that the guy was trying to do, I guess, positive, it could have been negative. You know, let's say if I walked out the store with this key and boom, you know, here come the cops and, you know, everybody else bought a $2, $2 key. And imagine what that would do, like, for 
my ministry, you know, like, okay, you know, you don't, you send a manifestation of God, here come Satan, you're going to try to kill it for a $2 key. And, and what the way the guy did it, he would have stuck it in a bag. That's what was so odd. And when nurse didn't want me to, and I had to walk through the whole, you know, entire store to get to the front with this, this bag. And I was like, oh, uh-uh. And I, when I, like I said, got to the front, I was like, you know, I hate for anybody to lose their job if they say anything, you know. I didn't tell them to do that. I don't even know when my first time seeing him. But with that, we have to be aware of things that sometimes trickery or somebody makes something look like it's good. Kind of like if you're dating somebody or you meet somebody and they make you feel like they, you know, they got this nice car, nice house, and they, they wine and dine you and do all this stuff. And then you find out later that it wasn't their house, it wasn't their, their car, you know, that it was that it was a bunch of lies they told. They don't work where they say they work, you know, they tell you they have no kids, they got 10 kids. And, you're like, okay, just a bunch of trickery. And so he's like, you know what? If I had known this, if I had just looked at the sign, looked at the signs or, you know, chose different. So in life, we have to be aware that it's, you know, spiritual activities around us. And because somebody's nice with it or act like they're trying to bless you, everybody that say bless you, da-da, you have to, you know, have some discernment. Like I said, with the guy telling me, you know, bless me with his key, but he's cursing and all this kind of um stuff. And then, you know, it's just weird. I'm like, okay, this does not feel feel good and all feel right. Now, if he went in his pocket and paid for the key, it'd be a little something different, you know? Or, you know what I'm saying? That, I don't know, but it's just, those those are things that sometimes we, we like I said, we, we, we overlook or we fall for. And I know like many stories of people getting tied up with the wrong crowd or somebody getting in a car with somebody and they go do something illegal and get that person in trouble. Or that the person, they rob somebody to the store and they go do something silly now the person's involved and, or somebody's at their job and this person say, well, um, they take this and then they give you part of it. And the reason they give me part of it, you think they're blessing you and they give you part of it. So whenever they get caught doing it, you get in trouble too. And so with that, we have to think about these um, these things. Even if it look good um, or look like a blessing, so, okay, is this really you know, so is this really a, a blessing from you, Lord? So, the um, but with that, the... I was at peace, you know, I was at peace once I got my, got the receipt, paid for it, but that whole 10 and 15, 10 15 minutes, like, okay, trying to just, you know, stay, I can keep my mind on the Lord, things of the Lord, that just really had my mind, like, going, like, what is he trying to do? You know, I had never experienced that before, somebody just dropped something in a bag, and, you know, until it bless you, you know, <laughs> like, mm -mm. but the other um story I have down here, I want to share I, um, the Bible verse last week was Isaiah 45 and 3, and talking about treasure of darkness, I went to another store that I, that I, I think I may have been in this store maybe twice, maybe twice, um, and I, I didn't like the store, that's why I, I don't shop at this store, and only reason I went to the store, because I was trying to get this item, and it was the only store that popped up on my phone. It said it had it. It was interesting that it popped up saying it had it. Because I, you know, the, I went to like uh, three other stores. And so I actually called this store. And when I called the store, they said, yes, we have one. And anyhow, the price of the item was $150. And I was like, and, um, and basically it was an electric blanket. That's what I was looking for, an electric blanket. And I was like, $150 for an electric, you know, electric blanket. Well, I got to um to the store and I found out that the blanket had you know been marked. It was marked down. They had it at customer service for me, and so I um I got the the blanket and I was um very excited that the um, blanket was marked down and that was the only one they had because they had it hold, holding it for me. So um the lady asked me if it was anything else that I want to look around the store and I was like no I don't ever come in this store. But I said you know what I went ahead and looked around. So let me just look since I'm in here. Let me just walk around. When I walked around the store, I said, you know what, I, I, I kind of like some of the stuff they got here. I, maybe, you know, so many years ago, I just, it just wasn't a fit for me. So, I picked up a couple of more items. Anyhow, I ended up with about maybe close to $500, uh, $400, $500 worth of stuff. And had no business with that amount of stuff. But um, when I got there, I was like, okay, I'm going to get this. And when I got back to the cash register, the um, lady that had the, um, the electric blanket, I got my other stuff. Long story short, 
she looked at me and she said, um, basically she was going to give me 30% off. It was more conversation to it than that, but she was going to give me 30% off my whole 30. Yeah. Yeah. 30% off my whole order. Anyhow, um, where I should have paid about four or $500, she, uh, um, gave me a uh, 30% discount off the um the price. So when she gave it to me, everything I had ended up being $150. And I was like so excited. Like, thank you, Lord. Thank you. So that This is um uh, a blessing. Now, she didn't say it was a blessing, but I'm like, this is a blessing. I wasn't expecting this. I'm going to be back in this store because I got, you know, a couple items. And I got this electric blanket that was supposed to cost $150 itself. Now, I got more than one item. And... I got a, a bunch of stuff and I'm just paying $150 what I should have paid for this electric blanket. So then the lady, this store has some kind of like, some kind of like loyalty program or club or whatever. So she asked me to sign up for it. I said, okay, I signed up for it. And when I signed up for it, after she gave me my receipt and everything, she looked at me and she said, well, you have $30 and you'll be able to spend it like in a week or two or something. She told me, and I'm looking at, I was like, okay. And then she looked at me and she whispered to me and she said, now, I don't supposed to tell you this. And I said, okay. She said, we'll get in, um, we'll get in trouble for telling this. They don't want us to tell y'all this, the customer. I said, okay. She said, but if you come in a day after, you better use this. And she said, you have $10 over here. You better get $40 off. And I was like, oh, okay. I said, well, thank you. She said, you're welcome. And so it was just interesting that with that, I got all this all the items for $150 and then for the um the and then to have a, a little coupon that said I got $30 like some kind of books or something to use and then another ten dollar and that she was like telling me that you really can use this a day later and you'll get more off you instead of $30 you'll get $40 $40 off as I'm like like use that as cash or whatever and i was like okay well thank you that's like another 40 dollars off of like the 150 dollars i just spent and i was like okay now that was a blessing you know why the lady did it i don't know you know she was just i guess being kind of something something to put on there but i had my receipt where i had paid for stuff and she you know i'm not sure she was a manager who she was but i was thankful for that so from the ledger blanket and from the key it was two different experiences where two people was like they were blessing me but one that that just you know i was like uh-uh that's 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 demonic there and then the other one it felt like a blessing and then she went so far to tell me to come a day later and i would have forty dollars you know instead of thirty dollars that i can use you know basically the same as cash and i'm like okay thank you lord so with that just know on this journey that we have to, we have to think, we have to use um, discernment with everything and everything that's, um, people may say that's a blessing, they hooking you up or looking out for you. It, you know it may not be so. It could just be a setup and just, you know what I'm saying? You just don't want anything to discredit you or to, you know, get you into any mess. So just when you're out there living, know that things like that can happen. Okay. My Bible verse for this week that I'm going to um, be focusing on is 1 Corinthians 2 and 9 from the NKJV. And it says, but as it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man, the things which God has prepared for those who love him. I'm going to say it again. 1 Corinthians 2 and 9, the NKJV says, But as it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. You haven't seen nothing yet. On this journey, know that God has some great things for you personally. Sometimes, you know, it saddens me when I hear people saying about when they get to heaven and when they get to heaven know how glorious it's going to be and I agree I know it's going to be wonderful but there's a lot of people that they they can't even visualize that because they are struggling now here on this this side and there's a lot of people you know that that want things to happen on this side now I'm one of those those people I believe that you know it's going to be glorious and everything you know at you know the afterlife or however but while I'm alive now on this side, 
I want whatever, whatever God has, you know, in store or doing, I, 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 I want it. And with this, so I has not seen nor ear heard, nor have entered to the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. So the, the key to this is that we have to love him and we love him. We have to put him first above, you know, all things and God can do things not only materialistic in our life, but spiritually too. Now, some people, we want, you know, we want things like God to manifest. Maybe, you know, we all can say, well, we can use more money or we can use more time. Or maybe we, we're looking for the perfect, you know, mate or the perfect relationship. Or maybe something with our health, you know, like God, I'm believing you to, to do this. Maybe, you know, a person has some type of disorder they have no cure for. It, and you're like, oh God, I'm believing that, you know, that with you. You can heal me or you may have a doctor or something to come up with, you know, to cure just, you know, in time or however, whatever it is that you have going, going on. Maybe it's a wayward child. Maybe it's a child that's doing something that, you know, you disagree with and you're like, okay, Lord, bring him in. Maybe, you know, it's a person that you know you love that they're on drugs or however. It's like so many things that God can do. For us that we couldn't wrap our mind um, around, you know, you could have a person in your family that's been an um, alcoholic for 40 years, 50 years. You're like, you know, I wish that person would just, you know, can find, you know, find the Lord. I mean, to, to get a relationship with God and God can do it. And also with that on this side of, of a life that we can have spiritual encounters with God, too. So a lot of times, you know, we can be focused on one thing, but there's so many things that God can do that, that I has not seen nor you know, heard in our lives. But we have to make it personal. That's why this journey is a personal relationship. And you see so many people that don't experience God like he wants us to experience him, like that personal relationship. And that's, that's the only way I can describe it. God know how to package it just for you. He know how to package, just, package it just for me. And with that, it's something spiritually that people are like, well, how in the world did you know that? How did you, you know, send, you know, well, how did you know that? What, uh, how did you get that wisdom? Why do you know this stuff? Or how do you know this? And sometimes I get, um, I get asked that a lot. Like, how do you know this? Or how do you see this? And I have, I have to say, you know what? <laughs> you know, God, the Holy Spirit, you know, um, show me this or telling me that. And I know just like personally, I have had so many experiences with i mean through dreams through vision or just like just a knowing of, of things and i couldn't i couldn't say it was like just my own knowledge i don't think i could say you know is that the holy spirit showed me or told me this or this is what i saw and but it's i don't know it's like just a great wisdom because some people like they'd be blown away you know like it's interesting when you meet people and you talk to them they're like wow you know some people you know it don't matter one way or the other other people like they're blown away like how did you you know this or you know how did you you know come up with come up with this or how you do that or how did you make this happen and i'm telling them, well you know the lord and imagine telling someone that with something in your life and how it can help them you know to help them want to know the lord help point them to to Christ so with that know that in this life that you don't have to wait to die to get all the glorious things you can have like God has so many ways to do things and he can do it personally for you so with that know that from materialistic things to spiritual things that you haven't seen nothing yet all you have to do is grow on this journey and don't let somebody else weak journey or lazy journey or sorry journey or religious journey stop you from how can stop you from having god manifest himself in your life like he wants to because naysayers will i'm telling they will kill it because they haven't had that experience they like i was talking about a spiritual spiritual wisdom or knowing something because they haven't experienced it they, you know, saying they, 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 they'll, they'll kill it from you. They'll tell you, oh no, that's not real. That's not what the Bible means with that. That's da, da da da. No, I hadn't had this to happen. Let them be. Let God, I can say, unveil Himself. Let God manifest Himself to you the way He wants to, and just you know, do your part. And you always hear me say to walk in obedience to the center, pray, talk to God as much as you can. And you know, saying that you know and. Just, you know, just grow on this um, journey. Read your Bible. And that's, you know, the best place to start. 
And I say that all the time because it's so in so important. And sometimes, you know, I hear people say, Well, you know, you're you're different, or you know, you're no you God show you this, or this happened for you, or you got the golden touch, or you know this and that. And I'm like, no, nah, I'm just just a little country country girl that nothing too no too special. You know, just just like anybody else. But those are the things that I do. I I make an effort to to be obedient. I make an effort, no sense to read. I make an effort to pray, and you know, not perfect at it, but I'm making the effort. So with that, God knows my heart, and I ask the Holy Spirit to help me. So that's what we have to do. You have you know all these people telling how you can you know you can get more money, how you can get this, or you can you know seven keys to help, seven keys to wealth. This right here, affirmation, da 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 da. Law of attraction. There's so much stuff that people say, but I can tell you as a witness, as a witness in my own personal life, a testimony that the things in the Bible, if you walk in obedience. And you pray, you talk to God, you read, you put into play the things um, that God tells us to, to, to put in play from the Bible. To how God can manifest whatever, whatever it is. You know, it may not happen overnight, but he has a way to package it personally for you. And he will do it so perfectly. And the timing, you know, you may be on it right now. And God, okay, you're not even ready for this right now. Maybe you're trying to be, you know, some some kind of athlete, or maybe you're trying to be some type of singer, or maybe you're trying to own a business, or you're trying to finish school, or you're trying to find a soulmate, or you're trying to, you know, you want to be healed. Whatever it is, God has a timing for it. And sometimes we want it like right now, like microwave mentality. We want it fast, quick, like right now. But with these things, if we trust in God, keep our hope in Him. We can count on that we haven't seen nothing yet because God has a way to blow your mind, blow your socks off. And he just, I mean, he just keeps on doing it. He, he I mean, he, he can't run out. He's God. So don't let your journey become a boring journey or a journey where you do not see the manifestation of God. And God has so many ways to manifest. That's all I'm trying to say. He can manifest materialistic things. He can manifest um, a spouse, a love, the perfect spouse. I mean, you just don't want any spouse. He can manifest, you know, just a, a cure for whatever disease you're working with, whatever. Maybe you need a new job. Maybe you're trying to get a house. And he also can manifest the spiritual things. And what I know, just like I said, in my own personal life, I have had um, a lot of spiritual, like, Acti activity and I you know, so I can't say anything else that I'm doing that's any more like special or you know I can't say I go lay in the closet and I turn backwards 10 times and turn to the left and right and shake and you know and throw holy water up and whatever you know people tend to say that they make God you know come at 2 o'clock in the morning and, you know that's that's not how I work in my life I can't say in somebody else's life but I just know that reading God's word, praying, putting into practice and walking in obedience, how I, you know, able to like see like, for example, if you watch my video, more than like you've probably seen the, the video I made like, um, I think 2000, 2017 with the Kobe Bryant. And that was, you know, like I said, he's a, happened to be a famous person, but that's stuff that I, that, that I just, that, that comes into my, my life and not just for people that's that's famous but especially for people that i love people that i know or people that that i i know them and you know the person connected to them and like i have no control um of it you know and with that but it's like you know it's like it's right here like i has not seen or ear heard it's like spiritual wisdom how do you know that and people ask how do you know that how did you um how did you see this? How did you know? My uh, mother said one day um, someone stopped her and was telling her like, wow, you know, how did she know that? How did she know, you know that this was going to happen with um, with um, the Kobe Bryant thing? You know, when they her and um, my mother's like, with it, she was like, well, it, she just, that kind of stuff. You know, she she's able to to, to see that kind of stuff. It you know just. It just come, you know, she, I mean, I have no, it's no way, other way to explain it. So with that, a lot of people may say, oh, I'm scared of that. I'm da da But when God gives us something, he can use it for our good and other people good. 
And so he can give it to, to warn people. He can give us spiritual wisdom to help people. He may give you something like to tell a person, no, don't go to that doctor. They go to this doctor. Or no, you need to go to this state. Or, you know, just something that they be like, well, how do you know that? Or like, hey, you don't need to go there to, um, to, um, tonight or whatever it is. So spiritual wisdom is like really important if you want that. Everybody may not I want that. Like a um, person told me like they didn't that that's not something that they want. I was like, well, if I know something's gonna happen, I rather you know I rather know so I can avoid it or change it or do something different. But some people just rather really walk in and let it happen, and you know that's that's fine too. So if you are a person that as far as you want to experience stuff that you haven't seen nothing yet. And you want to just experience as far as like money or materialistic thing, I mean, that's that's fine too. But I know with me on this journey, I want God to come. I want to continue not just with physical materialistic things, but with spiritual wisdom and insight so that I can grow and be a help of people that, that want to know. Somebody that's like me that wants to know, that can say, you know, reach out or, or watch the videos and say, okay, here's a person that's, you know, that, that, that has a spiritual wisdom and, and and you can tell it, you can see it or however, or you can experience it, especially if you know me personally, right? So with that, I'm going to pray. Father, I come to you. Stand on 1 Corinthians 2 and 9. In your word, it said, but as it is written, I has not seen, nor it heard, nor have entered into the heart of man, the things which God has prepared for those who love him. Father, thank you for everything you have prepared for me personally. Father, I thank you, thank you, thank you so much. May I continue to grow in things of you. May I continue to strive for obedience, reading the Bible more, and praying more. Father, you're an awesome God. And just thank you for the things you have shown me, the spiritual wisdom, and the things you have had to manifest in my life, and how you have blown my socks off so many times, Father. And just thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for just being you. Thank you for your son, Jesus, and thank you for the Holy Spirit. Father, you're an awesome God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And so with that, so just know, like I said, this whole thing and me sharing the video, I'm just sharing my um walk and sharing how I pray for myself. I always tell you to touch and um touch and agree with um if you like to pray, you know, if you don't, you know, hire whatever. Just I my whole goal is to help someone else on this journey and have God to manifest Himself in your life. And like I said, and if not this Bible verse, use another one. The whole idea is to grow on this journey and let God give you spiritual wisdom. Let him give you, you know, a manifestation, something, you know, if it's money or health or spouse or school or you need to pass a test or higher. Let God do it and he will personally do it for you. And I know this to be true because he does it in my life. And it's nothing any different than, you know, that I can, that I can say anything special, I should say, anything that's special that I got going on. Just, just the fact that I'm telling you over and over what I do. I aim to walk in obedience. I aim to pray um, more. And I aim to, you know say to read um, to read the Bible. So with that, I just found those to be some key things in this journey. And it seems to be working in my life. And I want to continue to grow on these things. If you came across this video and you do not have a relationship with Jesus Christ, all you have to do is repent of your sins and accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And if you have a relationship, all you have to do is continue to grow it, grow it, grow it, grow it. Be the brightest light you can be. Read your Bible, walk in obedience, and pray. Talk to God as much as you can and be a light. Let God use you to wow other people. Let God bless you so the other people say, you know, I knew her when. I knew him when. Oh, wow. I remember he was walking. Now he got, you know, a name brand fancy car, whatever, you know, the expensive car is these days. Or and so, you know what? I knew that when he was, you know, playing, you know, t-ball. Now look at him now. Now he's, you know, he's he's playing professional soccer or baseball or whatever it is. Let, you know, and people say, you know what? That person, I always remember that person trusted in God. That person was a light. That's what you want. Do you want to point as many people as you can with your lifestyle, with the things that they see? You want to point them to Christ. You want your life to be a living testimony. You don't want to just say, okay, I have to point at the Bible. The Bible, you know, that's, you know, the Bible is excellent. But it's nothing like for someone that had maybe never even seen a Bible to see your light. So, again, read your Bible, walk in obedience, and pray, pray, pray. I'm Dr. Lee. 
Thanks for watching. Let go, let God in, keep it moving. Take care.